So, um, yeah, so good morning, um, everyone. So, like I said, uh, we're gonna have like a two, two hours, two and a half hours. So, I think I will let some time to um, an hour or so at the end of the class for question and answer, right? So, I hope everybody is uh, actively participating in this class because otherwise it's uh, not going to be fun for me if I talk by myself. Um, all by myself, right? So that's not going to be fun. Um, so I'm, um, one second. I will, um, yeah. Um, so my plan is that I will go through some of the slides, which I think uh, Yijing already shared with you just now. And um, I very much welcome any questions. So if you have any questions or remark or anything, just say it, yeah. Um, don't wait until the end of the class. Um, and then I the, think uh, after the slide, we will then go through how we can do some exercises in in HiSys. So I believe you all have access to HiSys. Um, and then we will do some really simple um, exercise to to give you a flavor on um, what dynamic simulation really is. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so all of these are my experiences, um, uh, and then um, this day outlined that I'm going to talk about with you. Um, we will, yeah, we'll explain a little bit on process simulations and chemical engineering because I think uh, this is uh, which semester are they, uh, Yijing? The students. Um. Now is their spring semester. Spring semester. This is semesters five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this is a uh, week uh, number four. <laughs> no, I was looking into like a, it's, are they like a uh, year one, year two, year three, year four? Oh, yeah, this is yeah, year four, uh, uh, year number four. Year four, okay. Okay, so yeah, the uh, final year student. Oh, final year student. So I um, so now yeah. um, so I believe um, that most of you have been exposed to process simulations, right? So um, so this is just like a refreshment for you, um, and then I will explain a little bit on the, um, what the difference between steady state and dynamic uh, modeling or simulation. Um, some of you may already know that, some of you don't. Um, so we'll see that. And I'll show you some examples, and then we'll go through the um, the HiSys exercise. Um, process simulation. So I have this a uh, movie. I don't know if you have seen this. Okay, here we go. Can you can you um, hear the sound? Do you get here the sound? Here we go. How do I do this? Come on, Mr. McQueen. Cruz, thank you for the old man. You, you can't hear. Can you hear or can you not can hear? hear? Okay. Uh, can't hear. Okay, that means I will have to one second. Yeah, stop sharing. And then share again. Uh, share system audio. Yeah. Like, what is simulation basically? Now can you hear something? Uh, yes, now can you hear. Go. How do I do this? Come on, Mr. McQueen. Bruce, thank you for the old man training, as crazy as it was. But I'm warmed up enough, and now I need you to launch this. Thing. Mr. McQueen, wait until you can handle it, please. There are no shortcuts. Okay, we'll just see about that. All right, my straw racer is on the simulator. Why, yes, I am. Well, let's see you take it out for a spin. Right away, Mr. Sterling, owner of the company. Okay, have fun. This is what I'm talking about. Whoa, didn't know about those. Prepare oh. to race. Wait, what did it say? Is it the talking? The green flag is up. I don't see the flag. What do I do? Go. Go? Go. Oh, that's sensitive. You have hit a wall. Shouldn't be this hard, should it? You have ah. hit a wall. You're fighting the simulator. Just race like you always do. You have Whoa. hit a wall. Can't be this many walls on a regular track! You have been passed by Jackson Storm. Wait, Storm's in here? For motivation! Storm 
races at 207. Pick it up, Mr. McQueen. I'm trying. You have hit a wall. Mr. McQueen, come down from there and we'll work you up to this. I am fine, Cruz. I can do it, okay? Whoa, 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 whoa! You have jumped a barrier. You have made two vehicles. You have destroyed a drinking fountain. You have disabled an ambulance. You are on fire. Danger. Danger. You are going the wrong way. Look out! Turn it off! Turn it off! Get these things off of me! You have crashed. You have crashed. Are you all right? You have crashed. I have crashed. Yeah, so that was was a simulation. So basically, the um, what we know um, simulation is um, or modeling in a sense is um, a representation, a simple representation of reality. Right? It's going to be very complex the reality, but then when we try to model that into um, as close to ideal condition, and then we try to make it as practical as possible, so that we can get our answers. Like in this case, he just wants to spare. Um, so in that sense, um, uh, well, we will have to learn how to build it, and we will have to learn how to learn how to use it. Yeah. So um, there are many process simulation software on the market, and then we have um, a symmetry from SombaJ, We have Aspen Suit, which I think you know already. We have Pro2 from Aviva, Petrosim from KBC. We have also like um, more mathematical modeling in nature, like Chipproms from PSE, uh, Mobile Tech from the Netherlands. Uh, we have uh, some Unisim from Honeywell, and then uh, we have some uh, like um, uh, how to call it uh, non-commercial ones like a DW Sim, uh, and then a Coco, uh, and then there are also many many others. Yeah, but these are like the big ones for commercials, and then this is like uh, most well-known ones for the uh, non-commercial uh, software. So basically, why do we do process simulation? Why do we need to do that? Uh, so these are all like my um, my experience. So uh, things that I've done, uh, you can you are free to to add your own experience on this. Um, so typically the basic the basic um, requirement or purpose why we need to do process simulation, like you all in your final year student right final year program, uh, and then later on when you move on to like uh, when you work for like an EPC company the engineering procurement and construction companies so you will have to do some maybe you are required to do some some process simulation in that sense you will get the um, um, uh, hidden mass balance HMB uh, so using that hidden mass balance you can then uh, uh, size the uh, process equipment right how big is the tank how big is the uh, how many trays you need for your distillation columns how, how big the power of your pumps and so on and so forth um, so that's the basic um, um, feature why we do. Um, uh, I think I will just use this. And then the, the second one, once we um, want to make a model of a plant or a section of the plant, we use it to find to help finding root cause of a problems because um, uh, typically when we have like uh, input streams and then output streams, we have some other streams that are not known, and then we can then use it to find uh, how big are those streams that are leaking, for example, and then the, uh, where are these components? Are these components going up to the distillation column, or are they going down to the um, to the bottom streams? So um, we can do so as well with the help of process simulation and then the, um, once we get the model we can also do some sensitivity analysis we run some some case studies to get uh, if we can improve uh, uh, the performance of the plant so to say and then the, um, uh, this is then the one that we're going to do uh, the, this morning so uh, we will then try to evaluate the dynamic condition of a plant um, uh, dynamic or unsteady state or transient, yeah, it's also the same, the same, uh, same uh, meaning. Um, and then the, uh, we do this typically to evaluate the the process safety, the safety of the uh, level of the of the of the system, like a process safety, as well as with the process control system, um, because both of these are like really strongly linked together. Um, 
and uh, I think I, I believe you all have learned about process control, right? Uh, process control course, and in it you must have le learned something about dynamic simulation because otherwise we cannot do, or we cannot design any control system without being able to model the the, the situation in uh, in in yeah in dynamic uh, modeling. Um, and then the, um, once we get the, um, the the model as well, we can do uh, a lot more. Uh, this this done a lot more in 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 R and D department. So we can do uh, techno economic analysis for new processes. If you have new processes, if you have a different catalyst different catalytic systems, you can also model that and then evaluate the economic, evaluate the um, the profitability, evaluate the uh, the the planet, the environmental uh, index, and then also the safety index, people, planet, profit. That's what this three P is. Um, and then the, um, once you get the, the the model, you can also then pinpoint. Okay, so this part of the plan it requires huge amount of energy, and then hence it will then cost money. So uh, you can then tell uh, the next stage of the research, we are going to find new ways to reduce the energy consumption in this particular uh, section of the plan, for example. So that's that's the um, showing research directions. And then the, um, these are also like uh, co um, uh, related to the um, to the existing plant performance to evaluate the um, the, um, the modifi plant modifications, if any, and then do some bottlenecking of the plant. So if we want to increase the capacity of the plant, um, we want to double the capacity, for example. So what are the bottlenecks of the plants? Um, shall we increase the, the size of the exchanger by um, two times or three times or shall we then the increase the but, uh, or buy a new pumps or new compressor or just simply change the motor of those um, rotating equipment so these are the things that you can you can explore uh, while you have this uh, process modeling and simulation model at your hand but nonetheless um, this is the, the the same thing that I often advise always advise to um, to students so if you go um, uh, once you graduate from your school right so um, um, you have no knowledge whatsoever um, and then the, if you go to the uh, to your plant uh, when you work um, uh, without anybody telling you to do so the, don't wait for anybody to tell you to do so you just you just have to make your own mass and energy balance because then you will understand by doing so you will understand your process your plant and then you can then pinpoint where uh, where you can make some improvements um, in the plant because nobody um, nobody will have that overview um, uh, as uh, you would have when you have um, uh, modeled the plant um, or calculate the mass and energy balance of your plants yourself okay uh, and then there is also a term like called hybrid modeling I don't know if you guys um, have seen this um, have you have you heard about this if you can make like a how to call it um, like a thumbs or like um, you show some hands in the screen so that I know whether you have um, um, seen or heard about the hybrid modeling term anybody who can raise their thumbs or because um, I don't want to speak by myself yeah um, nobody well, if uh, if nobody, then um, uh, well, we have a long way to go. So hybrid modeling is um, it's not a really new thing. So it has been done uh, in research at least as early as 1990s. Uh, but then the industries we uh, start to adopt it like uh, in the last few years ago um, um, with the release of the new features of the several of these commercial software. Um, the idea is that um, um, you know, right? When you design a pump, you do, you have this, um, uh, you know, the equations, right? You have the first. We call it first principle equation. So you have this um, energy equals to P times the pressure, the delta P, the pressure that you want to overcome, uh, multiplied by the uh, volumetric flow rate of the liquid that you want to um, uh, you want to um, um, allow to flow, and then divided by the efficiency of the pumps, of the motors, and then so on and so forth. So that's the um, the, the simple uh, equations. So you have like for example um, um, this one equals to right delta p and then pv divided by efficiency so this is how you design your uh, pump motor right um, so you can then you'll then get how much in, in kilowatt or in, in in horsepower or in 
whatever unit that you would like. Uh, this type of equations, we call this uh, first principle equation, uh, first principle understanding, because we know if we have to overcome a huge delta P, we will then need to have, we will then need to, to supply more energy to the system, right? And then if we want to um, uh, allow a huge amount of flow or lower amount of flow, we will have to then um, uh, supply more or less energy respectively right and then if your pump is then too rusty or l very less efficient that means you also have to supply a lot more of energy to get the same thing done yeah so that's that's we can understand the equations uh, we can then explain how each of these terms uh, related to the um, to the to the energy that you are going to supply uh, so that's what we understand or what we see uh, as first principle understanding so that's the first principle and then the, in in some other cases like for example this efficiency in itself uh, it's not really something that we can understand well we can explain it but it doesn't mean that we can model that right so you have uh, you have things like um, uh, uh, fouling you have things like um, uh, yeah i mean the, um, all of these uh, properties that we don't know uh, but we do have some data so we do have some data. We have we have some some we, have, we run it, and we do have some data, and then from that we can make some regressions. Yeah, either it's linear regression or non-linear regressions, or add complicated models uh, uh, that you want. So the combinations of this first principle plus the um, the regression is what we call hybrid. So I would say this is then first principle. Uh, so this is what we call hybrid modeling. So we hybrid. So you know this hybrid car, right? They can run on gasoline and also on gas, or maybe um, yeah, gasoline and gas. It's hybrid car. Uh, but then in this case, we have um, we have a first principle um, uh, um, uh, uh, formulation, and then we have some data driven or regression, data driven uh, regressions, and then we can combine them. That's what this hybrid modeling is all about, okay? But we're not going to talk about this today, just to give you a flavor. So this is the concept. So we have some black box, like I mentioned, we have some black box. Uh, as long as we have some data, we can make some regressions. Again, we can feed it to the process simulation models, make it a hybrid, or the other way around, we can have like a, a machine learning uh, uh, like regression models, and then feed uh, some of the um, uh, first principle understanding into these uh, models, so they can also have, uh, on the other hand, another versions of uh, a hybrid modeling. Um, this is uh, simply, simply, um, uh, simply the uh, an example. So we have um, um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, flow rate, temperature, flow rate, flow rate, flow rate, uh, as variables that you measure on the plant and also the things that you can control, right? Because you can manipulate them. And then these are the properties that you would want to uh, model. So you have also another five models. Um, uh, and then, for example, if you want to increase uh, or reduce the reboiler duty, uh, how much is then the flow rate, how much temperature, how much this and that, and these flow rates that you need to uh, modify in such a way that you can uh, get to your um, objective. So that's basically what this is. Um, I'll skip this uh, because that's going to be um, too much for today. Uh, now I'll... Um, Explain on the steady state and dynamic modeling. So, do you, do you have any questions? So, I will just pause here. Uh, I'll just briefly mention about um, what process simulation is and then what the commercial softwares are, why we use it, and then a little bit on the hybrid modeling. Is there any question? You can ask questions, yeah? I mean, um, I'm not going to, um, to eat you. No question, um, because I believe um, it's not like you understand it, but uh, it's just I don't know. Don't be shy, yeah. I uh, know it's it's our trade in here in, in Southeast Asia, um, but this is online. I mean, uh, um, so um, okay. Now, um, uh, anybody knows what the difference between steady state and dynamic modeling? So if you know, uh, raise your hand. Uh, give like a thumb up thumbs up and then uh, uh, yeah anything so that I know uh, 
yeah because uh, i cannot see the screen yeah uh, I, i cannot see the uh, the teams uh, window so um anybody knows what this means so i'm going to let um 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 uh, i'll just ask yeah i mean it's easy yeah this cut it's easy for me um uh, i'll just ask um jordan I see this name like Jordan, Jordan Ling Yao Sing. Uh, so Jordan, what is the difference? What do you know about steady states and the dynamic modeling? Hmm. Apparently Jordan is not there. Oh, Jordan, are you there? Okay, now uh, Ong Siang Gyo. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. If I don't, I mean, please um, um, forgive me. So Ong Siang Gyo, um, uh, uh, what do you know about steady state modeling and then uh, what do you know about dynamic modeling? Hello? Steady and non-steady. State. Yeah, what does it mean? What does it mean by you can you can you can just um, um, unmute yourself, right? I think. Oh, if you were really really shy, okay, can can also type it. Um, so, what does it mean by steady? State, steady and then non-steady. What does it mean? Um, William, William Low, William, William. Hello, William. How? Um, what does it mean by steady state? What do you know, basically? What do you know about steady state? What do you know about dynamic uh, modeling, William? Oh, nobody, other than Ong. Apparently, um, Alvin. Alvin Lim. Alvin. Um, what do you know about? Um, steady state and then what do you know about dynamic modeling are they normally this quiet uh, Yijing? Uh, Elvin uh, are you there oh, they are yes I'm here moving. yes So what do you know about uh, steady state and what do you know about dynamic modeling? Uh, I'll say steady state. The whole process is in steady state. Oh yeah, what does it mean? <laughs> I know. <laughs> what does it mean by steady state? In simple English. There is no changes in the system. There's no changes in the system. What? Uh, no, ch no changes. In Uh -huh. in uh, the process variables no changes in the process variables that is steady state or that is dynamic which one is that that is steady state, steady state. okay and the dynamic modeling mm, there is always fluctuating there's always fluctuations in the process variables uh, okay yeah very good so you're right so congratulations um uh, um Yeah, so that's basically what that means. Uh, one second, so that I can I can see the teams on my other monitor. Um, so, like Alvin said, um, in the steady state, uh, so um, imagine, okay, imagine that you have like this bathtub, yeah, you have a bathtub, and then you open your valve, uh, your tap water. Uh, into it and then uh, and then you will then start filling the bed up right so while you're filling it and then the height is then the, um, going up right the height of the uh, liquid the liquid level in the bed up and then the, depending on the diameter means uh, how big how big your um, uh, bed up how wide is that uh, and then the the speed of this um, H on the water level The speed that it goes up and then uh, it will then be different right if you have a, a a larger diameter 
it will then go uh, relatively slowly compared to if you have a, a small diameter right so that's that's um, how you can visualize it and then you can open a valve a little bit more and then down there you can also have like a drain and then you can open the drain and then the, if this flow rate equals to that flow rate that means um, you're not getting any change in the, in the water level so steady states in a way if you if you think about that um, so we need to measure you know this equation right in the mass balance uh, class uh, you have DVDT means the, the, the change of volume in this uh, uh, bathtub change of volume in this bathtub equals to the flow rate that is coming in minus the flow rate that is going out right so that's this one so this DVDT equals to uh, F in minus F out but then in the steady state like Alvin said um, uh, this volume it doesn't change throughout the time so you are opening this valve um, uh, uh, um, uh, fully open and then you are opening this valve fully open that means this flow rate equals to that flow rate and then the level in this uh, bathtub right either it's like empty or just like uh, at certain level it will not change if you open it and then let it uh, tomorrow you come back to your bathtub and then you see you will still see the same uh, water level in your bathtub so there's no change in the volume in the uh, in the tank or in the bathtub uh, hence it's equals to zero which means that uh, flow rate that is going in should be equal to the flow rate that's going out right so that's that's what it means for the steady state so um, looking at these equations you don't see anymore the volume right you don't there's no volume expression here so irrespective of the volume, how big the tank is, or how small the tank is, how big the heat exchange is, or whatnot, uh, it doesn't really matter to you, right? It doesn't really matter to us uh, in steady state, because um, what matters to us is then um, the flow rate coming in, and then the flow rate coming out, and it has to be the same, it has to be balanced, right? So that's, that's what the steady state is. We don't really care the size of the equipment, we don't really care about the size of the unit depression, because there is no size or capacity expression in it what we really need to care about is that the input to the plant has to be equals to the output to the plant so whatever input streams that we're going to put into the system it has to be the same as uh, the output to the system but in the in dynamic uh, uh, situation uh, dvdt is not equals to zero right this is not equals to zero and hence, uh, this flow rate, the uh, flow rate in and the flow rate out, they can be, I mean, they are different, right? This can be lower than that, or this can be higher than, than the F out, right? So if this F in is higher than the F out, that means you will have a positive. If this is higher than that one, you will have a positive DVDT. That means the, flow, the, the volume, it will then positively, positively change, right? So if I can draw, uh, uh, one second. Draw. I can draw. So if I can draw, so I can draw. Can I draw? No. Yeah. If I can draw, or something like that. Right. Uh, so this is your V. If this is then positive, if this is then bigger than F out, so you will have um, you will ha you will have a curve something like this, right? But then if you um, um you have a, a lower, and you may have like, something something like this. Assuming that we start from the same uh, from the same uh, 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 starting point, yeah, you will have something like this, right? So that's as easy as that one. So you will see as time progresses, your level can go up or go down depending on how big the volume the volumetric flow rate going in and then the volumetric flow rate going out so that's um, how we see this so that's dynamic and then that's that is that in one slide um, um, so you can also see right um, how do we model that dynamic so like I mentioned to you um, it's steady state is very easy there is no there is no um, um, uh, there's no uh, capacity uh, expression so if you have a sorry uh, you have a complete um, one second if I draw another thing yeah just to give you a blue so you have a you have a plan right so you have a plan oh, okay 
very nice. Um, I don't like them. Uh, okay. So you have a plant, so I don't really care. So you have this unit operations, so you have this reactor, uh, you have a column, whatever. So you floor it in, this one and that one. So this is one, this is two. And then you have another three, I don't know. And you have four. And then you have five, for example. Right, and then uh, we don't really care how these things are configured in it. Right, we don't really care how big they are. We don't really care how they are configured, connected. But then, if we can then find a boundary of a system like this, so it should follow then f in one plus two plus three. Right, it has to be equal then equal uh, equal to it has to be equal to four plus five okay yeah so f in has to be equal to four uh, f out so one plus two plus three it has to be equal to uh, equal to uh, four plus five if it's not equal that means there's something wrong in the calculation and also in your understanding uh, in that sense so that's that's the uh, steady state and then while the dynamic itself it can be different yeah I mean the, um, 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 if I uh, okay, now I can do something. Yeah. So in 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 dynamic, in dynamic. So um, right. So if you have this type of, of volume, and then you have it coming in one, and then going out two, compared to. Uh, compared to, I will put it here, compared to this your system and you have this vessel right, so you have one and you have two so you will have a different, a differently, uh, a completely different, well completely different you will have a different um, a graph, yeah, relatively so in this case, you have for example so temperature and then this is then for example pressure or volume or temperature I don't really care pick your Y and then you have a small system here right you have a small capacity so um, uh, assuming that we give the same input say one and then one so you will have uh, something like this we start from zero for example you'll have something like this and then in this case you will have something like I'll just uh, so um, make it big. Hey, sorry. Hey. Uh, so if I put this like red, for example, yeah, a big one because this is big, and then your graph will be something like that. Can you follow? Yeah, because it will need it will need more of what is coming in. For example, you need it will need more mass to fill in this, or more energy also to fill in this tank, right? Uh, compared to um, compared to this small vessel. So um, uh, at the same time, at the same time, you will have um, less accumulations of whatever in a bigger capacity system uh, compared to um, um, uh, the smaller ones like in this case yeah can you follow so that's that's the uh, the, the basic idea um, so um, so that means to model that is not that really straightforward so for example in this case um, for steady state it's easy right so this dvdt equals to zero that means f in equals to f out but then to model a dynamic tank like this, so you will need to have this expression and then you will need to evaluate because you're not looking into the volume. What you can see is the height, the liquid level. So that means height is then equals to um, the, the, the area, the, the, the area, right? And then multiplied by the height, you'll get the volume and then the area itself is a function of diameter because we know the diameter. 
and then the flow rate going out is also a function of the CV or the valve if the valve is big or if it's like a, a, a partially closed or something so depending on the CV of that valve uh, and then the delta P from here to there you will get the of volumetric flow rate and the delta p itself is then uh, if you put it like draw g delta h right this delta h uh, and then also plus this one if needed but if we assume that this is going to be zero that is then this is then the only delta h and so on and so forth until you will get something like this right so um, you rearrange all of these equations you get dh dt equals to f in which is this f in divided by 1 over pi d square minus the cv of the valve uh, rho g uh, divided by the area as well and then the square root of h so that's this uh, this is then um, to to calculate something uh, from the steady state to dynamic you will need to have a lot more effort so from here you can then imagine to run a dynamic modeling uh, will be much small uh, much slower compared to run a steady state modeling yeah can you imagine because it will then need to run all of these equations and this is only for a very simple tank uh, and then you can imagine then if i have like a complicated um, uh, system like distillation column for example because in distillation columns you will have a capacity for each of the trays and then if you have like a 50 or 100 trays and then you will have 100 of these at least uh, plus the um, the energy equations as well and then the equilibrium equations so there are a lot of things to be done and hence um, uh, you can then um, foresee that uh, the dynamic modeling will consume a lot of uh, computing power and also a lot of brain power <laughs> and also um, um, uh, a lot of energy okay any questions so, um, well, like I'm, I'm repeating myself, so steady state is just like F1 equals to F2 plus F3. And all of these, there's no change in pressure, there's no change in concentration, there's no change in temperature in terms of energy. And then you can see, for example, if you have like, a, if you plot P over T, or concentration over T, or temperature over T, it doesn't really matter. So you will see almost like a straight line. Right? So DP, if you see this line, your DP DT, right? So, um, uh, if I, is to give you a, right, so, um, your DPDT, so for example, you have, um, so you have this one T, this one T, this is your DT, right? Uh, when this is your P1, no, this is your P2, and then dP in here equals to zero, and then your dP dt obviously equals to zero, and hence this is a steady state situation. And then dynamic, well, it ha it always has a slope either it's negative or positive. So that's that's uh, what this dynamic uh, simulation. How it is different than the steady state. Uh, now, uh, because you, well, you have learned process control, right? So we have um, the uh, the block diagram on the left, and then we have like uh, the physical diagram on the right. Um, uh, this y over here, this y over here, um, on this left. Uh, what is that on this right? What it what does it correspond to this y here? So um, in the chat uh, So write your answer in the chat so, let me check. Yeah, so y is equals to y equals to what? So we have the set point I'm not going to I'm not going to explain it Yeah, but if you want me to explain this and then the, you can ask um, unmute yourself or type it uh, and then I will then gladly explain it but then I'm assuming now you are already in the final year uh, of your program so you should know this uh, otherwise then you will have to uh, review your first control because um, so what is Y here hello Y on the left hand side and then um, what is what is this what is that Y here 
on this uh, right hand side is that f in is it f out is it d is it h is it like uh, i don't know um, volume or, or valve or what what is y come on Agnes, who's Agnes? Agnes, Agnes, to have I? Agnes, what is Y? Y is F out. Um, okay, I'll ask another one. Aina Shafika. Y is F out. Aina. F in ah okay now we have two different answers I will ask another one uh, one second one second one second uh, <laughs> uh, Akshara 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 and Varghese Akshara so one says F out one says F in and then Akshara what do you say what is Y what is Akshara no? Hello? Okay, Akshara is not in somehow. Uh, I've asked Alvin. Brendan, error signal. Ah, error signal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, not really quite. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> It's not really quite, so um, um, I guess you have to help me here. Um, so Agnes, uh, why is Y is F out according to you, Agnes? So you have three answers, and then now none of it uh, is 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 right. Why this Y? Uh, I know that you're all guessing, <laughs> uh, but uh, okay. What's your what's your um, uh, argument for that guess? Uh, well, guessing doesn't need an argument, but nonetheless, uh, error signal. I will ask another one. Brendan, uh, Brendan, Brendan Ling Ongwei, Brendan. What is why? Come on, ah. Uh, so now you have, um, see, uh, you know why SP, right? This is SP is set point, uh, unverified. I don't know what unverified is. Uh, can you rename yourself? Says H. Unverified. H, okay, so uh, unverified. Why do you say H? You can unmute yourself here. Yeah? Hello. Can can you, Yijing? Can we see who this unverified is? Yeah, I also have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from here I can't see. Controller is connected to H. Controller is connected to H. Well, um, which diagram? Um. Can you unmute yourself? Because I cannot unmute you. With it. Oh. By receiving. Uh, it's also like unverified. You're all very shy. Or oh, you're all very shy, or you don't get your breakfast already. So you don't have any. You don't have any strength to speak up. By receiving transmission signal from by receiving signal from the transmitter, receiving signal from the transmitter. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm not confused. Um. Control is going to. Okay. Anyway. Uh, well, if you are all very quiet, uh, it's going to be very difficult then. Uh, to to have the high um, training. Uh, 
Um, so you see that this is the next set point here, yeah? uh, and then this is your process, and then this is your controller. And then you can see that your controller here is, this is then your controlling, this is your control setup, this part over here. Yeah, you have a control valve, your final control element. And then, the, and then what goes to the, um, uh, this is then what is then telling uh, what the final control element should do, either it's open or close. And it gets input from this guy, yeah, coming over here. So we can then say, well, this line is over there, the error. I think error, Akshara, your error signal is, is this one. Yeah, this error signal is this one. But what is then the error signal? Error signal is then the difference between your set point and then your measured performance, right? So in this case, what are you measuring? What are you measuring? So you can see this diagram on the right. You, you There is no measuring on F in, right? There's no flow meters here, no, right? And there's no flow meters F out. So the answer from uh, from Agnes and Aina Shafika is um, that's your answer to your answer, right? We don't have any. There is no measurement here, and then there's no measurement over there. So that means this is not F in F out, right? Because we don't measure them. So the only thing that we are measuring is the in this case the height, the 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 liquid level in this tank. So this is what we are measuring. So since we are measuring this, so this is then the signals that we are measuring, right? This Y is then your H, the um, the uh, the unverified uh, person. I don't know if this is guy or girl. The unverified person is correct about that. Uh, so your H is then your Y, right? So you input here your set point, and it will then correct um, uh, compare the set point and then the measured liquid level and you will get your air signal and it will then go so this is then H right so I mentioned already so this error signal is the, um, uh, this one over here so the height set point minus the um, height measured um, and then your this then your um, uh, it goes to the controller and then once it know what the difference really is it will then calculate do we need to close it or do we need to open the valve right so it will then send signals um, to the final control element um, and in this case um, if we open or close this um, it will then uh, if we open this that means this whole flow rate will then increase right uh, if we close this that means this whole flow rate will then decrease so um, this P is basically this whole um, thing, uh, the, the F out, right? And then, uh, and then this is in your process in a way. Um, it will then, if this is then going out, oh, sorry, if this goes up, that means this level drops. If, if this goes down, if the valve is closed, this goes down, that means the levels goes up. And then, um, and then this is then the, the H, your H, um, all the way here. <laughs> And then the, you can add in this D is basically this uh, F in because it just comes. I mean, it can go up and down with, without us knowing it, right? Because there is no, uh, we don't see this, how big this is. So this is what we call like a disturbance in that sense. Okay. Um, yeah. So I know now. Um, um, I think now you understand the difference between the steady state and dynamic simulation, right? So I have some quiz to you. Um, so if you want to know, if you want to know how much then the distillate flow rate, is this, uh, this, does it call for steady state or dynamic simulation? If you only know, if you only need to know how much is the distillate flow rate, is it uh, steady state or dynamic? Uh, what's the person? Chan Wang Yi. Chan Wang Yi. So, is it steady state or dynamic? If you only want to know, if you want to know the the distillate flow rate. Hello. Steady state. Okay. 
Now, uh, how big is the heat exchanger? Um, Chan Yuan Hui. Chan Yuan Hui. How big is the heat exchanger? How big is the heat exchanger? Steady state also. Uh, and then the, um, who else? Yeah. Um, Uh, Jacqueline Jacqueline Chong Jacqueline Chong uh, if you need to know how high the pressure in the vessel um, how high it can go up uh, do you need to uh, do steady state or dynamic uh, uh, modeling Jacqueline dynamic yeah you can use dynamic or you could also use the steady state depending on the um, how uh, you know that this um, uh, think in your energy balance class your lecturer must have asked you to uh, to calculate the maximum adiabatic temperature or adiabatic something like that right? the adiabatic temperature maximum or maximum adiabatic temperature something like that so if you if you can then calculate because this is like a steady state it's just like a simple uh, energy balance right uh, in a way it's steady state so uh, once you get the temperature and then you can then if you know the volume well you need to know the volume and then you can then calculate the pressure in that vessels but then um, you don't need to know how it, the pressure changes um, uh, in timely manner it's just like you need to know the maximum pressure that it can reach for given a certain volume but then knowing what the volume is, that is then the prerequisite to do the dynamic simulation. Um, 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 okay, I will skip the other questions because um, it's 10, 12 already. So just to give you uh, another few minutes and then we go to the high seas. Um, so this is... Uh, an offshore platform gas compression system. Uh, I deliberately make this very small so that you cannot read this. But nonetheless, we have um, we have gases coming from different wells, from different uh, wells, right? So one, two, three, four. I don't know somewhere around here. And then we have a gas compression system in a platform. This is train one, and this is train two and then the, um, they are compressed right uh, and then the the uh, the outlet streams are commingled and then uh, some of them are sent to different users and then the, the the remaining it is also being compressed again and this uh, train one and then train two and then it's commingled and then it will then send to a uh, different yeah consumers so to say Right, so we have um, one, two, three, four um, uh, compressor uh, systems, and um, the the job at the time is then to, um, they design the control systems in this area. So our job is then to model this whole system and see if the the system will then behave smoothly or not. So that's this um, example. I think I have yeah, I have this uh, some some I have some some graphs. I think I can show you. So these are like the the, the grounds um, coming from that system. So you can see it's very slow. Yeah, depending on your depending on how uh, sophisticated your computer is, uh, it can be so damn slow. Uh, it can also be like relatively fast. Um, so we have um, on the x-axis uh, we have the time domain right and then on the y-axis you can have everything you can have the pressure you can have the flow rate you can have um, a temperature rating you can have the liquid level and so on and so forth and um, this was done in high seas so you can see the um, the the uh, yeah how it looks like um, so I can I can show you so now we have uh, like an even scheduler in high seas so we can say okay after a certain amount of time 
uh, or when, right? And then the, or after a certain occasions, we we'll then can close or open a certain valve, um, uh, op uh, run the compressor, or uh, run the pump, and so on and so forth. So that's how we control uh, the system um, in HiSys. Okay, so you can see all of these calculations, and then you can see how 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 well this is changing, and that one's changing, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's one. And then another thing that that I did is um, so you know we are here somewhere, right? And uh, somewhere here, I guess. Okay, Slango here. So we are somewhere here. Uh, and then up in the north, we have uh, in the in eastern <coughs> coast of Malaysia. So we have dozens of um, uh, oil and gas platforms, gas platforms, and then they have like hundreds of hundreds of kilometers of pipes, uh, uh, commingled among themselves, and also like commingled or combined uh, on the shore here in Keten Terengganu. And then the situation at the time is that um, if can we model them because if we can model them uh, that means because all of these gas uh, 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 wells they they have different behaviors yeah they have different characteristics some of them they have like a high co2 some of them they have like a high um, ethane and then high condensates and then the question is that um, if the membrane contactor somewhere here if it's like um, out of operation um, uh, how can we see or when when can we see the spike in CO2 concentrations on the shore in Kerte or Terengganu? And then similarly, if uh, if any of these compressors shut downs, uh, when can we see the pressure drops on the shore on the receiving terminal? Because this gas, they are like uh, partially treated, uh, compressed, and then the condensates are pumped, and then they commingled here, and then they will then do some. Uh, 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 they will then send this to uh, many many chemical plants around. Oh, the Petronas has. Okay, so we model that in 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 in, in icon or symmetry now. Uh, what it's called? Um, it looks like this, and then. The, Think yeah, this is how it looks like. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. So we have on the the upper part we have uh, that dozens of uh, platforms, and then we have some. Uh, see, you can have dozens of, of of platforms over here, and we have all of these pipes and vessels um, connected. And then the, these are like the one, two, three, four, five, six, six chemical uh, gas processing plants. Uh, in the one that they have in 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 Kerte. Um, and um, yeah, basically, yeah. So um, this is then how it looks like. So we have um, the different Y's and time domain over here and then we can see how the the system changes and then the spreadsheet also it looks like this uh, compared to the ones uh, in, in high seas okay um, this one yeah there's another um, uh, for uh, for process safety study uh, we have a relief scenarios I think in your program you don't learn much about process safety right uh, but nonetheless just to give you an idea so we have a distillation column and then the, um, uh, it has three reboilers right in your class you only learn about one reboiler but then practically speaking you have you can have like uh, two three four five six seven reboilers supporting energy uh, supplying energy to the same to one column so in this case you have three reboilers and then these two reboilers are big reboilers coming from an FCC tower uh, somewhere um, and then this is your steam reboiler, right? So this is just like a heat integration effort. So um, uh, there is no control whatsoever here. So if that FCC tower of um, uh, fails, uh, that means we don't have enough of energy to to be supplied to this column. And because this is downstream, so if that thing fails, this will then stop anyway. But then they have this steam reboiler which they can use to um, yeah to polish the performance of the column. Um, uh, uh, um, slightly 
right? And then it has some control systems around it. And then the vapor stream going out, it is connected to, to it is connected to five um, similar in size um, relief valves. Relief valves. So the job of these relief valves is that if the pressure in the system uh, it goes to a certain set point. Uh, this relief valve will open, it will then release the gases, the trapped gases here, it will then relieve to the flare, okay, it will then relieve to the flare. Uh, normally this will then be closed, all the gases is then uh, goes through the condenser by cooling water and it goes to the, uh, to this, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, receiver, yeah. And then from this receiver, we have a reflux going back to the column, and then we have the, um, uh, I think this is a water, uh, and then we have also the gases, the off gas, the uncondensable, and then we have the distillate going to the subsequent column. Um, so the question is, um, if, if this cooling water fails, um, um, what happens to the system? That's basically what it is. So we model that in symmetry, uh, in ICON. So we have the feed coming in, in, his, in this, yeah, this one. And then uh, we have um, different um, tray configurations below the feed stages, and then on the one co tray configurations above the feed stages, uh, you can see one, two, three, four, five uh, um, uh, relief valves over here. And then we have the condenser, and then this, then this vessels, and then the, this is then that reflux, this, this, this reflux. Yeah, this one and then we have the reboiler over here which is that one and then we have this bottom stream which is that one so um, if you can see here um, this is then the the condenser if it fails right the duty drops to zero at this 500 second uh, you can see the solid line is then the pressure in the column this column is huge yeah, it's huge. So it will then take some time to start to filling up, right? Uh, and then it goes up, goes up, because if the condenser fails, that means your gases over here will not be condensed. If it's not going to be condensed, that means the whole space will then be filled with the gases, and then it will then create a higher pressure, right? Higher pressure over here, it will then go higher pressure over there, reach to a certain set point, in nine minutes, right? Nine minutes from here to there, it will then reach a certain set point. Um, this valve will then open. So when this valve opens, your gas is then dropping. Uh, sorry, the pressure drops, right? Because your gas is then released uh, to the flare. So the gas drops. And then after a certain um, uh, um, some time, it will then close and then your gas, because uh, this is then keep running, right? It's keep running, this is keeps failing and then um, uh, and then uh, if you close this and then you will get another accumulations of gases which can then also increase uh, the pressure like that and it goes down and then up and down right and then this dotted line I forgot to mention to you this is then the steam reboiler so uh, when the pressure I think um, yeah so um, uh, so this is then uh, measuring the temperature in the column. So if the if the this is then failed, that means this whole thing will then be filled with gas, and then it will then uh, the pressure goes up, right? As we know it, and temperature also goes up. And then when the temperature goes up, and then the steam uh, will then be closing down. So you can see the the duty of the steam is then dropping, and then after seven minutes, so after a certain pressure. Uh, this is then going to be shut down completely and then you can see after seven minutes it will then be shut down completely in this case this reboiler uh, but still because uh, because the the majority of the energy coming from the uh, upstream FCC columns we keep supplying energy because there's no way to control this uh, and then the, the gas is then um, accumulating and accumulating uh, hence we see this uh, increase in the in the and the pressure so that's that's what this is. Um, this is another of control system evaluation is in an FCC unit. So we have FCC um, uh, reactor, uh, well, uh, type of FCC. It's a, uh, a, a bubbling, a fluidized bed uh, reactor. 
So we have um, um, we have the uh, regenerator over here. Um, we have a slide valve. So um, if you know in the FCC, um, how do you call it? Um, the catalyst is moving. Yeah, the catalyst is moving. Catalyst is solid and it's moving around in this manner. In this manner. Right. So this is then how, how uh, it flows around in this manner because of the fluidization of the catalyst. So we um, we send some uh, uh, we maintain the fluidized uh, state, fluidization state by um, injecting nitrogen here and there. Um, the problem is that because this hydrocarbon uh, in the reactor which needs to be cracked and then in the regenerator over here we we burn the coke on the catalyst and with that we inject air. Yeah. So uh, this air it cannot go up because if it if this air goes up it will then meet with the hydrocarbon it will then make everything go kaboom. Okay, so we need to maintain a positive delta p from the reactor to the uh, regenerator. How do they do that? There are two ways. And then I model this and then model the the effect on the system. Uh, this is the first control system. The results of that. And this then the second control system. The results of that. This is then uh, this was done in, in Aspen Plus at the time. But both uh, like I mean this is also like a dynamic simulation in a way. Yeah, you can see uh, y axis is then the timing and then this is then the pressure profile uh, accordingly. If I um, if I change the set point here and there. So that uh, those are the dynamic simulations that I've done in, um, so far. Um, um, this I think you can skip. Um, this I think you can skip. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, I think you are now doing final year project, right? For your plant design. Um, uh, you can you can benefit from here, right? Um, so you need to make set your goal. Why do you want to do process simulation? So for that, it's very clear goal to get the mass and energy balance, so that you can then size your equipment, right? So that's that's as easy as that. And then, the, yeah, you need to define the simulation boundaries. Uh, what's coming in? What's coming out? Conditions. Um, so you have your raw materials, right? How is it coming into your plant? I mean, in which state? Room temperature, ambient, or um, uh, untreated, or whatnot, and then your products. How do you want it to be sold? Uh, is it like a, a really uh, what's then the purity level? Uh, how be, how how much then the flow rate? And then what's the temperature? So those type of things that something that you need to think about and define. And then the, this is what I strongly uh, suggest to everybody doing process simulation is to understand to list down the components that you have and then find as many data as possible regarding the physical and chemical properties of each of the equipment so you will have a very big table right you have component a component b component c component d and so on and so forth and then you have like a, a molecular mass chemical formula um, density vapor pressure the thermal conductivity, flash point, boiling point, um, melting point, whatever, right? So then you can have a feeling, okay, so uh, this um, component will do go up or will go down, it will um, soluble in, in water or not, so you will have that feeling. Uh, and then you can then calculate the first input and output mass balance, um, and then, yeah, remember this always. So any process simulation software is just like a, a calculator, basically. Yeah? You yourself define what's, um, how, what and how you're going to use it. Uh, and then you need to be able to understand your results before you present them. So this is also um, a recurring pitfall, especially for students and young engineers. So you will need to be able to explain the phenomena. So you cannot say, well, if your results like, um, are, are presented in such a way by uh, by HiSys or by any process simulation software, you cannot have an answer like, well, this is coming from my simulation results. So that's not an answer. So you will need to be able to explain why you have such numbers. Okay? If you cannot explain it, and then you have to redo it again. Yeah. Um, and then this is uh, I'm repeating myself. Just model your plant. If you go to work, just model your plant. You will see then uh, problems, and then you will then see room for improvement. So I have now two case studies: the very easy one, and then the easy one. So which one do you want to um, do?
um, you all have high sys access right so we will, we will, we will then do another one now so um, oh yeah because before we do this uh, do you have any questions I'll just Ko Ji Ying Ko Ji Ying do you have any question hello no Li Ying Ki is leaving Okay, you okay means you don't have any question. Uh, I'll get another one. Uh, Muhammad Akid, uh, what is your question? Hello, Muhammad Akid. No questions. No questions. No, why do you not have any question? Okay, now, um, Muhammad Akhir and Ko. Uh, what is that, Muhammad Akhir? No reply. Muhammad Akhir. Muhammad Akhir. Are you there or not there? Not there, eh? No, not yeah, there. Yeah, maybe he's not around. He's just opening his laptop and then he's uh, playing around. Um, okay, so Ko. Um, you, I give you. Um, you. Ha there are two class activities, but you can only do one. So which one do you want to do? The 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 very easy one or the easy one? Ko Jing. Hello. See, I'm I'm um, giving you options to to determine your future very easy one i mean if i ask you a question and then you can you cannot ask me another question yeah it has to be very easy one dot or point uh, not another uh, question mark so uh, we'll we'll do the very easy one um, um can you take a screenshot of this so that um uh, take a screenshot and then i can um Um, you open your uh, high seas. Can I paste it there? Oh, yeah, I can paste it there. Can I paste it there? No. Yeah. Yeah, you open your high seas. Um, and then you must have. Um, you should see this type of um, page. Right, so we're going to be uh, very slow because um, this is also a very easy one. So very slow. Um, um, so you open a new one, new, and then create new case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then in this very easy one, you only have like a. So, okay, let's read this together. So we have a vessel, um, and then uh, we hope it to be like three baggage, but we'll see. So uh, what's going into what's coming into the the, the, the vessel is uh, we have a flow rate of uh, one cubic meter an hour flow. Oh, sorry, not one cubic. One thousand or one ton an hour, and then the temperature twenty five degrees C, and then pressure is like five bar gauge and then it consists of air air just simple air and water 50 50 percent yeah uh, why do i need air because i need to fill this tank with um, something that is not liquid so that's basically this then we can then read the pressure uh, that's that's the, the objective of this air uh, to be there um it's going to be a huge amount of air 50 percent uh, but we can always change that yeah 
I think we can change it to something like a 20% or something uh, and then it has this valve um, goes to the tank and then we have another valve and we have this environment pressure of one bar and then this another valve and another environment pressure of one bar so the way uh, dynamic simulation work because it will need we will it will need to uh, define a boundary like this yeah so this is our boundary um, so in the inlet the pressure is 5 bar gauge and then the outlet the pressures are 2 bar you make it absolute yeah why this is uh, bar absolute so the pressure here is bar absolute 5 and this one and that one are both um, one bar absolute and this is yeah bar gauge of bar absolute I don't really care so uh, what we need to know is then um, if we open and close one of these valves what is then going to happen with the system right and we will then monitor the pressure and we will monitor the, the liquid level in that sense yeah okay um, and then we'll see if we can make this uh, one keep, uh, one one tons an hour. So depending on the depending on the pressure uh, balance in the system in this in this box, uh, the flow rate can be can be larger or smaller. But we'll see uh, if we can achieve this one. Uh, first, we make it a very simple one. So we add open this. Uh, one second. Um, how many of you are already familiar with ISIS? Let me see. If you can raise your hand, uh, react, so like give a thumbs up. Uh, familiar with ISIS? Kian Hao. What is Kian Hao? Kian Hao is uh, a name of a person or it's uh, a term somehow? So, um,. If you are familiar with high seas, William Low, William. No, I'm not asking you to point to your friends. I'm asking you yourself individually. So, um, are you familiar with high seas? So, how many of you are familiar with high seas? So you can, if you say that you are familiar, uh, can you like type one or whatever? Type one, and then then I know because now you have you have twenty five people. So how many of you are familiar? Type one. Alvin is familiar. Uh, and then who else is familiar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, so all of you are familiar with ISIS. Oh, so good. Very good. Eleven. So about. Yeah, roughly half of you are familiar with ISIS. Okay, uh, and the other half is not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll go slowly. Uh, in any case, so uh, I am assuming um, you need to let me know. Yeah. Uh, you can unmute yourself uh, and then just say it uh, because I don't look into look at the meeting chat at the same time. Just unmute yourself and then tell me if you are. If you can follow this, yeah, make sure that you can follow this. Uh, this is the the first uh, like page that we will see uh, in the properties tab. Uh, you go to component list, right? Typically, it just pop up this way. Component list means we have to define the components that we want to model. So we click add, we click add, and then the yeah. So this component list, uh, by default, it goes to component list one. It gives this name, but we can name it later on. And you can uh, search for water, for example, right? And then enter. And you can search for air. Can you? Ah, we have air. And then you can enter or you can click add over here. So then the either way it works. So you have water and then air. Uh, and then if you go back to the components, you get now you have you are now you have selected water and air, yeah. That's um, the situation. Now you go to the component list. And then this one you can rename it. Yeah, uh, F two, um, Nottingham. Uh, as simple as that. So we know that this is all the component um, um, needed in the Nottingham University class. 
uh, and then once we select the components, we will then select the uh, the thermodynamic models, or what they call it like fluid package. Yeah, fluid package or thermodynamic model. So the same way, you click add, and then the um, uh, so you can see because it's only like water and uh, and um, and and air, so it's not really like a useful anyway. So we will uh, uh, we will use the ideal system, which is in this case I think the Antoine should be good, right? So the Antoine should be good. So we have Antoine vapor pressure. Um, yeah, that should be enough. Okay, and then the same way in this food package you can see this food package. So the food package one, for example, I want to rename it like uh, not uni. Uh, not double T uni fluid package so this not uni uh, full package is um, connected to Nottingham University uh, component list so that's basically what this is and then so we are using Antoine equations as the um, thermodynamic model and then so all inputs are a uh, complete right so it has it has the so high C's has the database has a like uh, they key in all the coefficients um, for Antoine equations for water and air yeah so it has this um, so you can edit properties if you want uh, but uh, we we keep it simple no. and then once we uh, define the components once we define the uh, fluid package or thermodynamic model uh, we are done with the properties we go to the simulation page we click the simulation page yeah right um, so uh, high sys now it has this if you go to the oh so this is then the flow sheet environment like they call it you need to make sure that you you can follow me eh? uh, if not then just uh, let me know uh, uh, this is the flow sheet environment uh, and then this is the palette the palette means uh, these are all unit operations then we can just simply drag and drop say for example I want to drag a stream material stream uh, energy stream we don't normally do uh, uh, I mean not normally we will do normal energy stream but we first try start with the energy stream um, I sorry material streams like this um, and then the, um, just simply drag and drop um, and then you can also if you go to this flow sheet modify then you can have this pan and then you can then uh, move around like that yeah you left click and then just move around things like that okay so um, just um, so double click on the stream and then you can rename it like feed and uh, 25 degrees C right and then 25 you can uh, see this C you can then click the drop down and then pick whatever unit that you want but in this case we stick to the um, to the uh, to SI unit the SI system uh, 25 degree C and then pressure is like 5 bar atmospheric right so 5 and then the, we need to go to bar atmospheric bar absolute sorry bar absolute bar Bar absolute, which is then 500 kPa, um, and then the um, unknown composition. Okay, unknown compositions, uh, and then we go to the compositions, and then we can say uh, how much was that? 50 50. Um, uh, 0.5. Yeah, you can make more fractions or mass fractions it's up to you but if you put like mass fractions um, we'll have a huge amount of air yeah um, uh, just put it more fractions and then click OK and you get um, you get um, ah, see now um, um, we have we specify the temperature and pressure we specify the composition and then for this composition at this pressure and temperature high is already calculate how much is that uh, 
the uh, pebble liquid equilibrium system. So we'll have uh, we'll have no air in the liquid phase, but we'll have some air um, in the uh, in the vapor phase. Right? 0.0093, so about 0.6 percent uh, more percent more percent. So 99 percent point four more percent is of uh, air in the vapor phase. Okay. So um, typically in a steady state, we just simply specify the flow rate. For example, if I want to place by the way at 1,000, I'll just do it that way, and then it will be calculated accordingly. Uh, okay means it is calculated. Yeah, doesn't mean that it is right. Just like calculated. Okay, so if you see green, eh, green the color everywhere, uh, don't be happy uh, because it's just uh, that doesn't mean you're right. Uh, uh, it just means that uh, it is being calculated um, um, and then you can then once we specify that we can see uh, how much is uh, how, how much is which uh, you can see in composition and then you can edit this into also for example and you can see so you can see it's about the same mole flow uh, 21 21 but then if you can see the 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 total flow uh, the total mole flow is 42 yeah that 1000 you can see mass flow so uh, you have already like a 600 kilogram of that this air and then the remaining 400 is is is, is water so you have a huge amount of, of air yeah you can change it um, because i don't seem to like it um, you can change it to um, um Fractions of uh, this then point eight uh, point two. Okay, make it point eight and point two, um, and then you have um, uh, air and water as well. And then flow rate, yeah. Um, so delete. Hmm. active okay so we specify only one flow rate uh, like in this case the mass flow rate um, and then we had that error because we changed something something um, from mole fractions to mole flows uh, back in the composition hence it's just changed automatically but nonetheless uh, once we specify pressure temperature in compositions the sub properties intrinsic properties are calculated accordingly and then once we calculate uh, once we key in the flow rate uh, some uh, um, extrinsic uh, properties properties are depending on the flow uh, the size uh, it will then be uh, calculated um, accordingly as well and we can see we have 20 percent of the uh, stream is uh, is vapor right 20 percent of that is vapor which makes sense because we put 20 percent uh, of the stream as as air, eighty percent water. So what? Twenty percent is then the, in the vapor phase. Uh, so that's how we try to do this in 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 um, um, in, uh, in steady state. But we are not doing this in steady state. We are now developing this directly into dynamic, right? Um, so, uh, or do we want to do that directly? Just just uh, to give um, because we don't uh, in this class we don't know what the size of the uh, um, valve is and we don't know what the size of this so we will then try to make a steady state simulation first yeah um, I will have to close the other one um, we'll make now we make steady state first because we don't know what the size of the vessels and the size of the uh, uh, valves half is more important um, we will do steady state first and then we have this feed coming and then um, we can then add a valve valve yeah uh, and then you can connect it this stream to that equipment by simply press control press control and then hover the mouse over this one you can see press control you can see that one right out and then you can then cl right left click and then drag it to the uh, input of the valve 
the same goes over here press control and then just drag it out like that okay can you follow if not let me know okay and then double click the valve and then you can say well if i allow if i allow uh, the pressure drop in the valve to be like half a bar uh you can say this fit valve feed valve fit valve okay we because this is in steady state and then we allow ourselves to design the equipment and then we um, we say well it's like half bar delta p if it's five bar delta p right we can then five bar means 50 kpa yeah 50 kpa um, and then you can see in the rating tab yeah it, you say that 50 kpa that means this is this was like five bar right five bar uh, 500 that means this is then 450 right this one is 450 and then the rating for this valve um this is just use linear yeah just use, use linear uh so 50 percent opening by default is 50 percent opening uh, with 50 bar uh, and then this flow rate and then you can see the cv cv is automatically calculated to be 23.6 so later on we can use 24 or 25 but now it's a uh, 23 right so that's that's what this is okay we now have sized the valve so we know the size of the valve which is then 23 or 24 or something um, and then we put in the the vessels the separator and then we can also control and then connect it over there and then make another one and then make another one for uh, vapor and liquid so it's automatically calculated because uh, in the vessels uh, they already assume that there is no energy coming in and then the, the pressure drop is zero into the vessel yeah so that's how it can calculate automatically the the output uh, streams so parameters see pressure drop is zero uh, and then the if you go to rating so rating in the vessels um there's nothing but you can you can you can do your own um, uh, shortcut calculations right so you if you have like for example um see we have um just rename uh, i can rename it from the inside just to show you uh one two three right um so i can rename feed stream that's too long yeah okay la. um three is bottom bottom and then this is two is top okay now you can see uh we separated uh, we have 1000 coming in we have 700 liquids in the bottom and then 200 300 uh, vapor in the top which is uh, and then you can say well if i have like a 700 uh, um uh, how much is that uh, 0 0.7 0 0.7 cubic an hour uh and then if i have like one hour residence time right 100 one hour residence time and then you can then well the size the liquid part of the vessel is 0 0.7 cubic right can you follow uh, 0 0.7 cubic so 0 0.7 cubic if you have like a l over d like uh, i don't know two oh you can say like 0 0.7 so i make it like well 0 0.7 make it one right so one meter cubic so uh, one meter cubic and then the, uh it has this quick size option um height is then 1.4 diameter is about 0.9 so it's about that number so that's how we uh quickly size this yeah i just simply use like a um, uh, uh, one hour about one hour residence time so 0.7 make it into like one you know i don't like to see 0.7 over here so that's basically this the the, the sizing of that uh, and then the same goes with the with the with the valve for the stop stream and the bottom stream 
Oh yeah, before adding this, any questions so far? Can you follow me? If you can follow me, uh, just uh, give a thumbs up. If not, then let me know which part that you miss. Yeah, very good. Um, and then we just simply add valve uh, for the top stream and the bottom stream and then connect the stream accordingly. Just like that. And then add another valve. And then connect it over there. Yeah, so we can then rename this as um, uh, top valve. Okay. And then the, again, we allow like half a bar. Yeah, I can go to red thing, for example. We can allow for half a bar, 50 kPa. And then you can see based on the flow rate that it we have already, because this is a vapor flow rate, based on this flow rate, uh, we need uh, like a CV of uh, 14. Yeah. Uh, the same goes with the, um, I can then rename this uh, top. Out. Uh, the same goes with. Uh, oh, don't forget to save your uh, in here your file. Save. Um, uh, in. In. You save it there, uh, and then the, um, do the same. In the in the in the bottom valve. This is the a simplified way to design things very quickly. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, delta P of fifty kPa. And then you can uh, you can see that uh, CV of uh, two. Now my questions to you. So we have the CV of uh, in the bottom. CV in the bottom. We have CV in the top. Let's see. Yeah, this is CV in the top, top valve, CP in the bottom, bottom valve. You can see the CV is 13, and then this one is CV is 2. While we know we have 80% um, of the feed is vap, uh, is water, right? And 20%, only 20% of the feed is, is, is vapor. And that 20% goes up as here, right? You can see it here. So that 20% is only like um, 300 kilogram. Uh, and that, um, and then the liquid is uh, 700 kilogram, right? 700 kilogram, 300 kilogram. But then, why is then the CV of the valve in the vapor phase is six times larger than the CV for the liquid, right? So two compared to yeah, the ten six times larger. Simply because of the volumetric flow rate, because it's not it's, um, because uh, because it's about capacity, right? It's about size. It's about volume. So the volume of the air or the vapor stream is, is much bigger. So you can see the volume is 0.3. Uh, no, sorry, now I'm wrong. So it's, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> see the, uh, the volume is the 0.7 and this then the 0.3. So the volume of the liquid is, is much um, bigger uh, accordingly, right? Because it's 700. Anyway, um, so the, um, but then the CV is uh, is uh, for the CV for the um, um, for the vapor is a lot bigger, six times uh, 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 bigger. So um, uh, why is that so? Right. So it has something to do with the pressure drop that we allow, which then fifty and fifty. Uh, it has something to do with the flow rate, which in this case is then that is then the uh, the volumetric flow rate, uh, and the CV itself it is the unit is that US gallon per minute, so it's uh, the the volumetric flow rate, um, and then we know that volumetric flow rate of of um, uh, of liquid is is also a lot bigger than the volumetric flow rate of the vapor, right? So you can see 0.3 and then the 0.7 yeah um, you can see in the in the valve calculation formula 
Um, as I can see, one second. Half calculations. Valve. Valve. Equation CV. So something like this for liquid service. So we have CV. Uh, CV equals to the flow rate uh, divided by one over delta p because g is then the constant. So one over delta p. Um, and then for that is for liquid service. And then for the gas service, we'll have a little bit different. Where's that stuff? Well, anyway. You can read this here. Yeah? You can go to Amazon. So Amazon, there's this half sizing. So you can you can go through this because we have only like one hour left. So <laughs> unless uh, you can see now the the CV is different. Yeah, um, that's how we size it. Um, so now we save. Um, okay. Now we save it, and then the. Um, and then now we want to make this into dynamic mode so we have to um, is um, uh, a good practice is then to save this under different name so I need to this is dynamic uh, we have saved that one in the steady state now we want to transform this file this particular file in the into dynamic simulation yeah um, now, the in dynamic we need to then the, define the boundary. So this is the, the boundary, like I mentioned to you. This is then the boundary. Yeah, uh, and then the um, this boundary is surrounded by the pressures, inlet pressure and then outlet pressures. So this inlet pressure is going to be kept fixed. This one is also going to be kept fixed. This one is going to be kept fixed as well. And then the sizing will also be kept fixed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how do we do that? We will then the, um, uh, go to the feed. Go to the uh, the to the uh, endpoint of the system. Oh, I need to rename this. Sorry. Uh, but out. So once we go to the feed, for example, and we go to dynamic, so we go to dynamic, and um, uh, we will then um, specify the pressure. We will then specify the pressure. So we keep this active, but we are not going to keep this active. We are going to inactive. We are going to deactivate this. So untick this. Yeah, we untick that, and then we go to the worksheet. And we will then remove this, delete. Okay, yeah, that's how we do it. We delete the flow rate and then we uh, keep it active over here. Okay. Um, and then the in the valve as well. Oh, we will do that for every um, boundary streams. So we have done this, and we are going to do that here as well dynamic and then we keep it active um, and then the, we will then the, once we get to this to uh, dynamic we will then specify this here yeah. on if I can still remember that correctly um, and then we go to this dynamic we will then keep this active okay the pressure is active and um, uh, and then for the so we 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 activate the pressure specifications for this feed and then outlet streams, and we think uh, let's see what we need to do here. Uh, pressure flow relations all done, um, and then valve opening fifty percent. Uh, CV is twenty three. So you could you could 
keep it this way or you could then increase it yeah uh, um, um, uh, to slightly bigger than this one for example if I want to make like 24 you could also do so okay and and then the same with the valve over here um, this one somehow you cannot do so um, yeah uh, let's see what this one is uh, this one you can do so 2.3 yeah I don't really care it's fine and then the, um, the valve head uh, of the, the vessel so we have the sizing already so that's good um, dynamic is um, we initialize from the products yeah we have the um, uh, we have the steady state uh, that one so now uh, we want to change it. Oh, up, up until this point, any questions so far? So we we have specified the sizes of the equipment, all of these four, right? Uh, and then we have uh, specified the pressure specification here. We tick this and deactivate the flow specification. The same goes with the outlet stream. We um, we um, activate this as well and um, and then we go to dynamic yeah and then you could also if you think that you miss something or um, you don't you're not really sure what to do and then we have this dynamic assistance in HiSys to help you so you can click this and um, 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 stream is not initialized so this is then the um, if we say analyze again you will then see this stream not initialized and you can say make changes uh, could not be made um, and then I can say well um, um, I can see now for example if I specify this to be I can I can still do this one 1000 so I initialize it to be 1000 yeah uh, put the previous number so I initialize it to be 1000 but still we don't keep it fixed yeah uh, we don't activate this this one we keep it fixed uh, we will always be 500 and this one um, um, right sorry uh, we have the fluorid but we cannot change this pressure that one as well we active that we activate that one. okay nonetheless so if we, I if I uh, initialize the case and then I go to dynamic assistance again uh, there is no problem right so now uh, I need you to make sure that all of you when you click this dynamic assistance it will then say uh, no problem anymore okay so can you can you please let me know uh, if you see the same um, um, yeah um, uh, remark from the dynamic assistance? I think I may have uh, spoken very fast. Let me know. Ah, oh, um, this one um, dynamic assistance. If you go to dynamic see uh, we typically go we are typically in the home page we go to dynamic and then you have this dynamic assistance if you click this um, and then it should give you uh, no problem warning I mean this remark green if you have a problem that means um, that means you are you must have missed uh, some of the uh, some of the steps uh, let me know uh, and then we can then um, solve it together yeah so the basic is that um, uh, we specify we activate the pressure specifications in the inlet stream outlet streams and outlet streams um, and then we um, uh, fill in the size of the equipment so we have three valves uh, the size of the valves is then the CV uh, and then we um, we uh, we key in the volume of the vessels it comes with the automatic calculations for the for the um, diameter and height as well 
uh, and then once you do so when you click the dynamic assistance we should see no problem so before we move on can you give me like a thumbs up or anything to show that you are good to go or not let me know okay one person with thumbs up anything else anybody else with the thumb Dr. Zufan, Dr. Zufan. yeah 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 can you open your dynamics uh, page of your separator v100 okay again uh, yeah So we just leave everything by default and then we simply put that the volume was one cubic meter that was the only modifications that we have uh, why one because we know that the liquid is about that 0.7 cubic meter per hour right and then we allow okay one hour of residence times of liquid and um, 0.7 doesn't sound nice put it one so that's the only modification uh, and then it, it has the um, uh, internal L over D ratio for for the vessel. Okay. So this one is the same, basically, yeah. So you can, yeah, I mean, this is something that you can you can explore. You can change different geometry, vertical, horizontal, or whatnot. Um, but um, the message is that we need to specify the capacity, like I presented previously. Um, so uh, more thumbs up to see if uh, if we can move forward. Okay. Now, can I see um, if we give like thumbs up? Uh, can I see how many people are now already at this stage? At this stage means if you click the dynamic assistance, you should see this green remark. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but only one two so I see William I saw Ong but the rest I don't see yet if they are still with us or they are not with us anymore I don't know why I still have miscellaneous specs on the dynamic assistance. Miscellaneous specs. Yeah. So, um, okay. We will... Um, so, if you check the feed and then the, um, the stream, the boundary streams here, yeah? uh, the outlet streams and the feed streams, um, it has to be like uh, the pressure spec has to be active. Yeah? And then... Th you need to fill in the temperature pressure and then the, some initializes um, uh, mass flow or molar flow or whatever one flow only uh, uh, the same goes with the top out uh, sorry the out the other boundary stream uh, we specify we activate the pressure spec uh, as well as the uh, the other liquid okay uh, and then we specify the 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 sizes like in this case the CV of the valve for all of uh, for all the valves and then we specify the, the 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 volume of the vessels yeah that's it uh, and then if you can still see one second um,
Yeah. Can you share your screen, Darren? Share your screen, please. Disable stream pressure specifications. So, um, so there's something wrong there. So you, I can either click on make changes below, but then I just need to make sure that you know what you are doing. Uh, can you um, share your screen? Let's see if I. This is too small. One second, one second. Yeah. Um, this is the valve. Yeah, you have the CV already. Um, if you close this, close this. You close this. You don't open anything else. <laughs> um. Um. Say, um, you go to that dynamic, uh, where is that, take control, you go to that dynamic, my, okay, so you go, uh, click this one, dynamic assistance, um, here you can see, if you click analyze again, okay, right, so, um, stream pressure specifications, you can see that's number one, yeah, so you go to the stream, uh, see you can see uh, I don't know which one is which two three five two three five see you have uh, specifications in stream two and three which is you don't need that right because all of these this we only specify pressure in the boundary streams which means stream number one stream number five stream number four okay if you close this so we will do this manually yeah? close this you go to stream number two go to dynamic so untick that one one second one second one second one second one second close this go back to the stream number two so uh, you can see this one is blue dark blue that means you specific you key in the number here which is not supposed to be because I don't key in any number uh, for the uh, I don't know uh, can I can move this window somehow we don't key in the number here right so you go to the worksheet see um, uh, somehow you key in this number so that makes the error so you delete that because delete that enter close that one and then you go to this stream number three again so you also make the same mistake delete that one and then go to dynamic hey go to dynamic oh okay deactivate that one close that one so now you are not even doing the steady state model properly um you the can you go to stream number six no i'm no uh, Okay, so you don't take uh, the okay, very good. Uh, go to worksheet. Okay, now close. So yeah, um, um, we specify this. I think I forgot to mention to you. So we specify the stream. We have specified the temperature, pressure, and flow rate. Yeah, pressure, temperature, flow rate. So close this one, and then the, we specify the delta P in this valve right see we specify the delta p in this well where's that 50 uh this 50 we specify that one and then by doing so the outlet of the stream which is stream six it will be calculated accordingly it will be calculated accordingly right you can see so 500 minus 50 equals to 450 can you see that one okay now you close this and then somehow your vessel is not connected or it's not really um, doing anything so you go to design um, you go to parameters unknown delta p so typically uh, i think because you specify some pressure uh, uh, is specific so you close this before. because you specify pressure here you can specify pressure there somehow uh, it will then override what is then the default pressure in the system so if you go 
double click on the vessel go to parameters and then here we have like zero zero for both of these uh, put zero here put zero there so that's the default so there is no pressure drop and also there is no um, uh, heat going in and out of the system right so once you do so and then you go to the worksheet and then the pressure in the uh, vapor stream and the liquid stream will be calculated accordingly yeah so you don't specify this right uh, and then close so it's a very rookie mistake okay so now um, do you understand uh, who's this one whose screen is this I don't know who's was it Daniel or something uh, so do you understand that so if you now go um, to um, uh, the dynamic assistance Darren, so Darren. So you go to that dynamic assistance. What do you see? Uh, ah, see, there's no error anymore, right? So that's um, 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 how we do that. So um, okay, any other questions? You uh, fail, tolong. Ah, okay, now you fail. <laughs> uh, share your screen. Hello, hello. You fail. Yeah, so um, which mistake, which similar mistake did you do? Can't see this. Uh, uh, click analyze again. Uh, where's that stuff? Click analyze again. Uh, so you st stream pressure something something something. So um, if you go to um, uh, go to your okay now um, go to your stream. Uh, um, so you can see this is star, uh, star, uh, very good, you showed this star. So this star means this number is specified, so 25 degrees C, 500 kPa, these two numbers are specified. So if you double click on the stream, for example, you can see these are like dark blue. So they are specified, and you will see that star next to it. But then, but then, um, oh sorry, has this been, if you go to dynamic, so this then activated already uh, but then if you see this one this stream um, dynamic see it is not activated so we should activate that one and then close that one close the window and then you do the same there activate yeah, so that means we, we, we keep this fix, we keep this fix, we keep that one fix, um, and then you are good to go. Okay? Okay. Now, share, I share my screen again. Oh, yeah. See, uh, so dynamic simulation is, is it's not that easy. Eh? Well, it's easy, but uh, it's... Um, uh, less easy than the steady state simulation, uh, basically. Um, so, uh, to do to do a process modeling and simulation like this, either it's steady state or dynamic, you need to have a strong chemical engineering knowledge. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll get in troubles with uh, so many things. So, the test of your chemical engineering knowledge is whether you can model a plant properly or not. If you can't, that means your chemical engineering skill needs to be brushed up a little bit. <laughs> um, um, where were we? Okay, so uh, dynamic assistant is everything should be green and, um, and then we go to dynamic mode. Yeah, We go to dynamic mode. 
Uh, are you sure you want to switch to Dimex? You can say yes. Right, so we are now in the stop mode. Yeah, don't click run stop mode, and then we go to integrator, click the integrator, yeah, click the integrator, and then you can see the units is uh, now in minutes by default. Um, the current time is zero, acceleration is by default one. Um, there is no end time non stop. So you can you can specify um, any you can stop it after 10 minutes or one minute whatever but now it's non-stop and then this real time this means um, let me know if you can follow me real time means once because once uh, you run this it will have like one minute two minutes three minutes and so on and so forth right so it has this delta t in the simulation but this delta t in simulation uh, it can be faster or slower than your reality okay depending on the computer spec so if your computer is very sophisticated that means you can then calculate everything like i mentioned to you you can calculate all of these dynamics modeling very very quickly yeah if you have a sophisticated computer so in that sense your uh, simulation environment will be much faster than your own reality our reality but then the if you um your computer is is, is is relatively slow that means uh, it will then calculate everything slowly slowly and then the simulation results will also be like uh, very slowly compared to your very slow compared to the current reality uh, in real time if we take this right you can see it indicates if the simulation should be run real time rather than as fast as possible means um, one minute or one second in the simulation is one second in our reality in our life now so one minute in the simulation regardless of the speed of your computer it will then be the same as one minute in our life yeah but then you, if your computer is so slow uh, well we cannot help it yeah it's just like a, it is for advanced computer i mean for sophisticated computer so um let's take this so that you can see yeah take this real time and then just like one so one second is one second okay and then the delta t is in seconds uh half a second so integration step it's a half a second but then the, uh, the unit is not okay now before we do that uh display if i click display i don't anything i don't remember no so we close this before we do anything else, um, and then we strip charts. Thing we can do strip charts because we need to know the pressure here and the level here, right? Ah, so I can yeah click strip charts again, click strip charts, and then click add. Uh, so that I logo one. So you can say well, uh, profile. Sample size, number of sample size is like 300, but make it like 10,000, whatever. Interval every 20 seconds, yeah, every 20 seconds. And then we edit, okay. Uh, where is that stuff? Oh, display. Yeah, display. display can you follow uh, now um, let's see uh, profile I close this I close that I close this okay so um, double click on the vessel um, here we can see dynamic so um, mm, hold up no. Uh, no I don't remember what either this one or that one uh, just list this one if you um, so highlight this liquid percent level liquid volume percent oh level Liquid percent level. Highlight that one. 
and then send to strip charts and then we have the profile right so send to strip chart and then profile yeah can you follow uh, you highlight what you want to see and then the right click eh, sorry level yeah right click and then send to and then strip chart and then the name of the strip chart that you um, that you have already otherwise you can always cl uh, click create new and then the, the same goes with the pressure vessel pressure like in this case uh, I can right click as well send to and then strip charts and then put in the profile so now I have to uh, vessel pressure and then the and then the uh, uh, liquid level. So we I think we can uh, we can graph control. Background is white. Huh. And then curve is um, you can see this is then the vessel pressure is green, liquid percent level is red. So you have now to. Okay, now I'm playing around myself. Let me know if you are. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, can you follow me? Uh, give uh, give a thumbs up if you can follow me. If not, then uh, then I will have to redo it again. Liquid level. And then the pressure. Yeah. Um, show all. It was oh, once I run it, then I can see show all. Show all. Ah, this one. Access show all. Then I can see liquid level. I can see pressure at the same time. Um. Okay. Can you follow me? Um, we have uh, automatic auto scale 0 to 100 400 500 okay yeah can I repeat again yeah I know um, one second yeah um, so I need to save you save you save your case you save your case control s uh, we go to strip chart. You go to strip chart because I want to see before I want to run it. You go to strip chart. Um, right, and then the, if you have already the strip chart, you can see the strip charts over here, and then the profile because I create the profile. Uh, if you don't create anything yet, just click add, and then rename it, and you will have something like this. Yeah, rename it, and then you have something like this, and then you click display. Yeah, either display over here or I think in my case if I have already the profile there I can just double click see I can double click yeah I can double click on the profile on the strip chart um, and then um, I can click add but it's going to be too complicated uh, the easiest way is um, I, um, I go to the flow sheet and then because we know already what we want to see we just go to say uh, go to the vessel and then i want to see the vessel pressure right and then i highlight that one highlight this number uh, and then right click highlight that number right click and then the ascend to ascend to um, strip chart and then profile the name of the strip chart that you have created okay the same goes with the liquid percent level so I put it here uh, right click and then send to and then strip chart and then profile okay um, is that is that clear if not let me know <laughs> let me know So, um, right. So we have the profile. 
uh, we can click display and then we have it already on the display uh, yeah for this one yeah um, so you could also um, think you can let me show table this I think this is show table ah this one so you can see this one as well show table you can configure this table later on yeah. uh, show table and then this one as well show table uh, this vessel for example if I want to um, modify that just double click on that and then I don't want to see the duty just remove molar flow remove vessel pressure I want to have it separate that yeah and then that's it so I have um, so I have um, yeah this one put it here and uh, that one that one see save so now I can see um, um, I don't like malls right so we can say add variable for example you want to uh, add mass flow rate mass. right double click or simply add here and then done and then I just remove the molar fluid. The same goes here. Double click on that, uh, remove the molar fluid, and then add variable. And then we can then find mass uh, flow. Yeah smaller flow doesn't mean anything unless in reactions uh, mass yeah okay so we have the flow rate we have some numbers I put it uh, where do I put it can I put it here I just did that but it seems to <laughs> it seems to work really? why why can't I make it bigger okay I can make this bigger yeah okay something like this okay yeah save and then we click integrator again Okay, now, um, have you made this type of uh, <laughs> uh, arrangement? Yeah, thumbs up if you um, if you can do this already. Um, okay, very good. Yeah, the rest is uh, is um, all of these steps is uh, I just want to show you one, and then we can then run it uh, options. Uh, one second. Where's that stuff here? Yeah. In any case, I don't see that one. Well, this there should be like an option. Oh, okay. Now, uh, before we run it, so now somehow, 
uh, thing because we we switch it already to the dynamic mode now we can uh, we can um, how do you call it uh, we can specify the pressure outlet pressure on the outlet strip uh, we made it active uh, but now we can then change it yeah uh, because now the pressure is about 400 kPa uh, we keep it that way for the time being this one as well 400 kPa um, so but we keep it that way yeah that one will change it uh, accordingly uh, we click run yeah we click run um, integrator started uh, it's not running yet in my laptop oh I have to wait Oh, it's running basically, but we just we simply because it we put like a real time. Yeah, we put like real time. So so I mean our seconds is this guy's second. So very good. So you can see the pressure is about 450 kPa, uh, and then the the uh, how do you call it the uh, the uh, the liquid level is also 50% because we start at that level, right? See, uh, I think we can increase this to um, we say 20 seconds somewhere, right? So one minute already. Oh, not this one. Uh, in here. Graph control. Uh, I think I saw somewhere at twenty second. Where did I see that? Oh, in the profile. Sorry. Uh, five seconds it will then add the more frequent this is the slower the the uh, the, the laptop yeah. so now let's see uh, we haven't had to the control yet but uh, that will be then the subject for process control class no um, now it's only like about manually manually changing this so now um, if I reduce because we have a f um, uh, uh, 450 kPa right in the vessel 450 kPa uh, but if we reduce the pressure here from 400 to 300 for example that means the pressure drop across this valve will be bigger right because we reduce this uh, that means the pressure drop will be bigger now it's about 50 uh, if the pressure drop is bigger, that means we will then lose more vapor to the top, right? We will lose more vapor to the top, that means this pressure will drop. This pressure will drop and then the liquid will go up. Yeah? Liquid will go up. Yeah, to, to, to balance that pressure. Okay? Um, uh, to, uh, to balance that volume. So you will see um, if we do so, so if I'm correct right I just need to reduce this pressure once again if I reduce this pressure uh, that means the pressure drop across the top valve will be bigger if the pressure drop across the top valve will be bigger then the the the, the f there will be more gases escaping to the top right than it is now uh, that will then reduce the pressure in the vessels so you will see a drop in the in the green in the green graph so if I do this for example I change it to 300 
um, enter uh, we should expect to see a drop a little bit on the on the vessel pressure if I'm right Huh. It will take some time. <laughs> so you can see the vessel, the vessel, the pressure in the vessel drops from 450 to 4. 10, 11 because of the because what I just I just said and um, the level just slightly increase a little bit right you can see this jump oh, just slightly increase a little bit um, and then because of this level slightly increase a little bit level increase a little bit uh, we should see well we did not record that but we will then we should see the slight increase in the mass flow uh, uh, following this, uh, because the flow rate here highly dependent on the delta pressure, right? Which is then delta H, the H, the the, the liquid level. So that's um, see, so that's um, uh, how how um, it behaves. too long yeah the uh, the real time the real time is too long so if I um, you can untick this real time yeah and to see what happens if you want uh, I I take it just simply to because sometimes it goes very fast um, okay now you can uh, you can play around yeah uh, you can play around you can um, uh, increase this or you can also um, uh, say for example just let this um, let this um, constant uh, say it's still taking I'll just untick this real time Let's see that one can see <laughs> see uh, the the liquid level goes up and then the, the it seems to be sta stabilized now here yeah, yeah. Oh, I see some of the uh, calculations over here okay so now you can play around um, you can um, uh, increase the pressure again or close the valve or do whatever you want or increase the pressure here uh, and then the, because the liquid level is too high oh, yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, I think you can uh, want to scale O X. Okay. Uh, ah. Okay. Now you can, um, uh, we have too high liquid level and then you can also reduce this or open the valve for example, yeah. Uh, I open the valve instead of 50%, I'll put it fully. And then you can, uh, you should expect um, uh, more flow rate because it's less delta pressure across the control valve and the bottom valve. And then the, um, more flow rate means the the bottom. Uh, sorry, the the liquid level will then drop uh, accordingly. Okay. Um, let's see if it's dropped, and then we will then end this. Do you have any?
can actually we can disable your time to further. Yeah, yeah. I just did so I maybe miss your. Um, or you can also do like for example this integrator. I can do like. Uh, uh, yeah, only three times faster than real time. That that one I can do. Something like that. But once, uh, be careful when you do so, because it's just like a simple calculations, right? So when you change it, you will, you will see this unexplainable spikes, so this unexplainable error. So we should be careful on the, um, uh, when we do this. Yeah, uh, we we save it. Uh, good practice that we save this and then the, um, uh, and then the, and then we then try to um, uh, make some. Uh, adjustment if such adjustments like in this case it creates all of this unexplainable error uh, that is because of the numerical issue not uh, not, uh, 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 not any fundamental chemical engineering issue uh, see do you wish to stop the cutter no uh, no failed yeah see um, so it's failed so I think with this failure we will then um, I showed you how to do this and then you can redo this on your own and then explore and then uh, make sure maybe uh, instead of one you put like three or four at the beginning yeah, and then you can see uh, how um, how it looks like um, um, when you run this okay um, if you find yourself in this troubling situation um, the best remedy is that to go back to the previous saved situation and then make some changes over there uh, in this case um, um, I typically also there is this minus right so I will then typically make sure that this is a check valve this is a check valve uh, one second options dynamic uh, check valve so we will not be able to see this minus flow uh, and then I do that for all valve which well practically speaking we can only do this if we have a check valve on the plant uh, but then in this case um, to make things easier to understand um, we will then the check valve yeah, it's no. Just keep it that way. No. Okay. Anyway, it's all error already. So um, I hope yours don't get into the error. And um, I think with this, I will then um, close the session, and then uh, I'm open for any additional Q and A.